let me start off by saying I can't possibly talk about this game without talking about the injury to Dak Prescott. Obviously, it's a huge blow for the Cowboys because he is an elite player. And you can argue that all you want. But this one hits especially hard because he seems like a great person. There's so much we've read and heard about him off the field this year, it almost seems like you know him personally. Aside from what it means to the Cowboys, people are seeing what it means to him. And that speaks volumes as to who he is. And of course his injury has football implications. And also implications that are business related to football. Which I'll talk about at some point. But not today. Dak Prescott is a great dude. And we're lucky to have him lead the Cowboys. So, from this one fan of many, I wish him the best and a speedy recovery. Now, on to the game. The Cowboys win another high scoring back and forth shootout and improve to 2 and 3, and are now in first place of the NFC East. We saw more of the same things that have been a problem all year turnovers that lead to points, bad discipline in the running game, and constantly not getting off the field on third downs. So, like I always do, on man up, man down, I'm going to highlight the players who came to play and the ones who have to do better. If you're new to the channel and like the content, hit that like and sub button for more videos like this one. Let's get to it. There's a lot of fans out there who, for whatever reason, want to trade Michael Gallup to look for parts to fix the defense. One, the defense has many problems. Two, the concept of getting weaker in a strength to be maybe average in a weakness makes no sense. Michael Gallup always makes himself available, makes contested catches, gets separation, and stays healthy. He's a dependable player. They made two big plays back to back. Gallup is a crunch time player, and he manned up. He can be as defensive as he wants to be on Twitter about how he's played so far. And if he did a fraction of that on the field, he wouldn't be on this list. Griffin has been a complete disappointment so far. And for all that was expected when he was signed, we're not seeing any of it. He's not setting the edge. He's not making the play in space. He's just not doing enough to keep Bradley and I off the field. With all the attention on Demarcus Lawrence's side, it's hurting the defense with his lack of production to get off the field on third down. Everson Griffin, you man down. You heard Tony Romo talk about it in the broadcast, but C.D. Lamb, already in his career, has become a special threat in the slot. I can't say it enough. It's very rare for rookie receivers to step right in and do this. You see games from Henry Ruggs and Chase Claypool and think it's normal. It really isn't. CeeDee Lamb's toughness, acceleration, and reliable hands was well worth the 17th pick. Already on pace for 1,200 yards and 80 catches. It's a good question. Is he already the team's number one guy? Another week, another standout game. CeeDee Lamb manned up. Except for Greg Zerline, this whole unit should be on here. Five weeks in, and the whole group has been a letdown. It can sometimes go unnoticed, unless they have a really bad showing. And they did, but were saved by a really bad mistake. The Cowboys kick return game isn't getting much, and the Giants forced them into bad returns with angled kicks. The offense has to start with shorter fields, and that group isn't helping. And when the Cowboys do punt, Chris Jones isn't getting any distance on his punts, and a bad defense is starting out on even shorter fields. The offense has way too much responsibility to pick up the slack. Defense gets most of the blame, and understandably so. But special teams, I see you, and you man down. I've been very critical of Andy Dalton, mostly towards people that think him and Dak are the same. We expect a lot from Dalton. Considering that perceived equivalent, the receivers he now has to throw to, and a team who's still, at least on paper, have enough to win some games and maybe compete for the playoffs. It takes a lot to go in the game, overcome your fumble, 
and lead a game-winning drive. The Cowboys have enough around Dalton to at least be viable in the time being, so long as he takes care of the ball. Given the circumstances and the results, Andy Dalton manned up. Follow me on this for one second, and if you disagree, correct me if I'm wrong. When I try to understand what the biggest problem is with the Cowboys defense, I keep thinking to myself, discipline. Guys not sticking to their assignments, slow to react, getting caught out of position. But that same logic applies to the running game. Oftentimes what I'm seeing is Dontari Poe not maintaining his gap and putting pressure on the linebackers to take on linemen coming downhill at them. This lack of gap integrity, in my mind, forces the linebackers to overcompensate in the running game, which in turn causes them to take false steps and lose leverage and misdirection. The fans are down Jalen Smith, but I think sometimes he's trying to make up for the job that Poe is not doing. It's just an idea. But even still, Dontari Poe, you man down. With Arizona coming up next, it's going to be hard pressed to keep their offense down. The defense has to be better with limiting yards after contact. Let's call it for what it is. The defense has to play its best game next week. It may look bad right now, but there's enough talent to keep themselves in it, and Dalton should have enough experience to hold it down. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and also a special thanks to at DJ Bottom Bottle for providing these tracks. And stay on the lookout for a preview on the Arizona Cardinals. As always, Cowboys up. Peace.